Welcome back to another episode of Lawyer Interviews. With us once again, we have Kristen Halkiotis. Kristen, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for having me back again, Jeff. Yep, it's great. People keep doing crimes and we get to keep talking to you. So thank you for that. On today's episode of Lawyer Interviews, your source of legal news, gossip, and professional insights, we are going to be discussing Trump's indictment. We're going to discuss some of the key legal terms, what happened to Trump, what does an indictment mean, and what we can expect from the upcoming weeks uh, from this case. Now, Kristen, I just want to get started. Last week, we heard about President Trump's indictment. What does an indictment mean? So Jeff, an indictment is just a charging document that's issued by a grand jury after hearing evidence. And, and the standard that they're working off of is a standard of probable cause. So is there probable cause to believe that there was a crime committed? And is there probable cause to believe that this is the person who committed that crime? And to be clear, it is that is a very, very low bar. We are not talking about the criminal standard of proof beyond a reasonable doubt that's required at a trial. This is a very low bar. And so once again, what would that standard be compared to the other standards that we're used to seeing in the criminal system? So in, in the criminal system, of course, at trial, we have this, the burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt, that the state has to prove every element of each charge uh, beyond a reasonable doubt, which is the highest burden of proof in our legal system. It's higher than any burdens of proof in civil court. And of course, it's higher than probable cause, which is merely the standard uh, that must exist to bring charges against people. So it's very easy to bring charges against somebody, but getting a conviction at trial is a different story. Got it. And so we also know that Trump was indicted by a grand jury. Uh, can you tell us what is a grand jury? So a grand jury is going to be a group of citizens who are summoned for jury duty, very similar to how someone, how a citizen might get summoned to sit on what we call a pettit jury, which is a jury we might typically think of the 12 people in the box hearing evidence in a criminal trial. The grand jury sits generally, um, and, there, and there are different sorts of grand juries. There's a standard grand jury that will convene generally in most jurisdictions at least once a month to hear, to hear evidence in cases uh, and to see if the state meets the burden of probable cause to proceed with an indictment against somebody. There's also investigative grand juries, which is more like what we've been hearing here, where a grand jury gets convened by a prosecutor to hear evidence um, and to investigate a particular issue or a particular person. I see. And so does, what makes them so grand? What's different between a grand jury and a regular jury? So it's also, there. there it's a larger number of people that are going to be sitting on that grand jury. Um, you've got 12 people who are your jury in a regular criminal trial. You generally have, at least in, in North Carolina State Court, we have 18 people on a grand jury. Um, so you're going to have a larger number of people, uh, unanim unanimity not required, uh, like you would have unanimity required in a criminal trial verdict. So it's just, it's a little bit different, but people are generally summoned to uh, be on juries the same way. They would get a summons in the mail, have to report for jury duty. And then when they're there, they'll be told, hey, this is for grand jury as opposed to sitting on a, a trial jury. So what is the process like when uh, the grand jury is hearing about the case? That differs uh, from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. So okay. for example, where I'm licensed in North Carolina, no one except for the witness, usually a police officer, is actually allowed to be in the grand jury room with the grand jurors. Prosecutors are not allowed inside defense attorneys, defendants not allowed inside. In other states, i.e. New York, they're actually, grand jury proceedings can be somewhat of a mini trial, if you will, um, mm. because those players are allowed inside a grand jury room. Uh, but again, they're not working off a proof beyond a reasonable doubt standard. It's still just that, pro is there a probable cause to proceed with an indictment, i.e. criminal charges against this person? Okay. So what we know about the indictment is that former President Trump might be facing up to 30 different criminal charges. Uh, but do we know anything about what these charges are and what this indictment says? We know that he's been investigated uh, and for some issues relating to alleged hush money payments made to Stormy Daniels. Uh, that allegedly Michael Cohen, his then lawyer, had had paid her hush money to stay quiet um, about her alleged alliances with President Trump. It's not the actual payment of that hush money that's alleged to be illegal. Um, it deals with campaign laws, to our understanding, mm -hmm. and the fact that he allegedly was reimbursed 
by the Trump campaign for the payments he made to her as, as extra bonuses to him. And that's that's the issue that uh, that allegedly it was documented as legal fees, something of that nature. Um, and that's where this tends to come from. So we know that the indictment has something to do with the hush money paid to Stormy Daniels and maybe another woman as well. Uh, most likely, you know, certain we'll we'll find out, I guess, uh, tomorrow. Uh -huh. I wouldn't be surprised at this point if there's more. Uh, 30 counts is a lot. Um, you know, I guess we'll just we'll just have to we'll have to wait and see how that shakes out. Understood. It's going to be very interesting to see how it unfolds, though, in okay. real time. So we know that it's being released tomorrow. That's what the report is. That is what the report is. Um, and that uh, the former president actually arrived in New York today uh, right. for the for the proceedings, the arraignment tomorrow, at which yeah. time I understand the the indictments will be released. Okay, so there the indictment and the arraignment are uh, the indictment released. Does that have anything to do with the timing of the arraignment happening? I believe so. Uh, there are some outlets reporting right now that there still has not been a decision as of now as to whether or not cameras are going to be allowed in the courtroom. That, and that if they're not, the indictments will likely go live online at the time the courtroom mm -hmm. proceedings are happening. Why would indictments be sealed up until this point? There can be many reasons for that. Prosecutor, a prosecutor can apply uh, to seal indictments uh, for many reasons. If there's sensitive information in them, in high profile cases like this, uh, to avoid, you know, media feeding frenzy, because they know they certainly want to plan this out, because there certainly is going to be a frenzy tomorrow. There's, there's going right. to be a frenzy. We know this. <laughs> okay. Now, tomorrow is the arraignment. We had the indictment last week, and now we have the arraignment tomorrow. What does an arraignment mean? An arraignment is just um, when a when a defendant makes an appearance, acknowledges the charges against them. A lot of times, um, you know, they have the right to have the charges against them read. They so they can certainly waive a formal reading of the indictment, um, and they would be asked to enter a plea. Um, so I would fully anticipate his attorneys have already said, I believe they will be entering pleas of not guilty. Right. OK. And this is helpful because, you know, people are going to be talking about this. We're expecting plenty. You know, Easter's coming up. We have Passover. Mm -hmm. come. People are going to have heated political debates with their families coming up. And we need to make sure that they're using the right legal terms during these sure. political debates. So this is helpful to know. He's being arraigned tomorrow. He was indicted last week by a grand jury. Now, I want to go back to what you were said, describing the potential charges that we know about, the hush money to Stormy Daniels. And you started talking about that. What makes hush money? What does that mean? What, what makes that illegal? So it's not necessarily the, the payment of that hush money or money to her to be quiet that's illegal. It's the way in this particular case that the Trump campaign allegedly reimbursed Michael Cohen for the payments he made to Stormy Daniels, at, and that it it being categorized allegedly as legal fees uh, when it came from campaign coffers, potentially out of compliance with election law. There's certainly a lot of uh, you know picky tack uh, provisions in in those election laws that people can run afoul of, and mm -hmm. so it will be interesting to see. Um, what those allegations specifically are, but not the hush money itself, rather the reimbursement of the money and payment and then some to to Michael Cohen from the campaign funds. So from what I understand, tell me if yeah, if I got this right, the payment of the hush money could it would not be a, it could be just a, a misdemeanor or something to hide the facts. But the fact that that's violating an election law indirectly is what is bringing this to a, a higher case. From my understanding, yes, the, the repayment of that money to Michael Cohen mm -hmm. from the Trump campaign fund. So I feel like we're going to be talking about this for weeks to come. We have an arraignment tomorrow. What's the rest of the pro when do we start hearing, you know, when do we get to the juicy stuff? When are we going to be in court and people are yelling back and forth and evidence is flying? Yeah, it's going to, I think it's going to take a while for that. Okay. How, like weeks, months? I think it's going to take a while. Um, you know, I, I don't know, you know, the ins and outs certainly mm -hmm. of, um, of, of how efficiently their office operates. Certainly when you bring charges like this against someone, um, as high profile as Trump, you would, you would think there would be, you know, mechanisms in place to make sure this moves efficiently through the system. Because of course, every time this case is on, you're going to have this kind of frenzy. Um, this is this is not just any, you know, Joe Q public defendant walking into the right. courthouse. From what I understand, they're going to have to suspend all the trials 
and the other goings on tomorrow at the courthouse in Manhattan in order to make sure everything is is kind of locked down for this one particular case to be heard. Okay. Now, uh, one character that's been in the center of news lately is the district attorney of Manhattan, Alvin Bragg. Uh, people who are uh, defending Trump or supporting Trump are claiming this is a political, politically motivated action from Alvin Bragg. So we'll ask you, you were, uh, Kirsten, you were involved with the, Chris, uh, with the criminal justice system on both sides. Is this a political action? Uh, of course, 100%. This is 100% political because here's the thing. Every single prosecution is political. Prosecutors are political actors. They are politicians. Mm -hmm. um, the only check on prosecutors are election. You know, if if a community is not satisfied with how its elected prosecutor is is prosecuting cases and the agenda that they're advancing and the priorities that they're setting for that community, their resource their their recourse rather is to find another lawyer to run against that elected district attorney in the next election. So every agenda that they set, every policy they create, every prosecution, whether it's Donald Trump whether it's people jumping the turnstiles in the subway, hmm. it's all political because it's part of whatever agenda um, that that particular elected prosecutor is promoting. Interesting. So this is not a controversial thing to say that this is a politically motivated indictment. Sure. I, I, to me, no, not at all. I, I believe that every, again, every uh, politics is at the heart of every single prosecution. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, we're going to learn a lot more about this. It'd be great to hear everyone's thoughts in the comments below. Kristen, thank you so much. I am sure we're going to have you back to talk more about this. Everyone stay tuned. We're going to learn more tomorrow about Trump's indictment. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me.